Rob, your number gets called probably the most by Master doing this stuff. Just, just how have you progressed this off season coming into this year? Um, well, first of all, I'm just, I'm just blessed that I get to have an off season. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, last last year I didn't have that opportunity. I didn't participate in the spring because of my knee. So um, just initially, man, just being able to practice in the off season, man, getting out there with the boys, man, it's a great experience. Great to be back out there, but um. Just like all my time off and as last year progressed, man, I just wanted to hone in on the little things. So like, just like I know for me, I was going to be transitioning into the jack position. So just learning coverages, learning how to tackle better, how to cover the open field, just little things of that nature and how to polish up on my pass rush, how to be a better run defender, things of that nature. Those are kind of the little things that I wanted to do progressing into this year. And I feel like I'm on the right track of doing so. So that's kind of like what I'm still doing right now and that's when I'm going to continue to progress. We talked to Gene a couple weeks ago. He said at the time you were only working out at Jack, but eventually you get some time at, at Rush End because you have a lot of experience there as well. Are you still doing just Jack or are you, are you getting any reps at Rush End right now as well? Um, I'm, I'm just full-time Jack now, so uh, all the defensive end stuff, man, keep them by my name because you know, Showtime still got my love. I love my D-line, man. I love Coach Cross, but I'm full-time Jack now. So. I, I remember when you made that transition during the season last year and you were very open about some of the challenges in making that mid-season. Where are you right now with respect to being fully ensconced in that position and being comfortable that you have all the instincts and nuances down? Um, speaking on the progression, man, just like I'm saying, like the only issue with me was just like learning coverages, how to um, see different um, see different um, um, formations and stuff, two by two and three by ones, um, my drops in those, in those scenarios with the given calls. And so like when it came down to it with me being a uh, full-time Jack, I can actually get the one-on-one -on -one time that I meet with Coach Chiz and stuff like that to ask him like, hey, if I have this scenario, what do I do? And if we have like buzz flat, strong hook, um, different drops and things of that nature, where am I supposed to be? So just getting that one-on-one -on -one talk with Coach Chiz and just um, asking him questions, like pick his mind a little bit on how I can be a better um, Jack outside linebacker. It just allowed me to be more successful in that position. So being a full-time Jack, man, it's just, it's just allowed me to, you know. What's your, what's your weight right now? Uh, two. 56, I would say. So are, you, are you down a little bit? Just a little bit, but it wasn't intentional. Have you got a chance to work with Ted, uh, Coach Monachino, a little bit? Kino, Monachino. Um, no, sir, but I will say with him being in the room, man, he, he has a great um, a lot of great experience, um, especially working with guys like Elvis Dumbleville, Khalil Mack, Leonard Floyd, the list continues. So just um, having, having him in the room, man, having his experience, especially with him working in the NFL, working um, with the Falcons this previous year, man, it's just like he has great value to the room. I'm glad that um, he gets to spread his knowledge with the co um, which coach is as well. well. What has he been saying or doing or, or in, in the meeting with himself? I mean, just anyway. This, you know, adding his input, things of that nature. It's not really anything like specific stuff that we haven't heard of before, but like I said, just adding on top of the experience that he's had and um, sharing it with the group alongside Coach Chiz is just, you know, just things of that nature. What about Amari Gaynor? Um, he's a great addition to the room, man. I'm glad he's here, man. He's one of those guys that's like, he's kind of like a thunder and lightning effect with us right now, man. He's definitely lightning. He's a speed, a quick guy, and then, you know, you bring me in for some power and things of that nature, being explosive. But um, Amari Gaynor, man, he's a great addition to the room, man. I'm glad he's here, man. He's very fast, very physical. He adds the edge to the defense that we need, man. And he cr he closes the space well, tackles very well in open space. He's that other guy that we need, especially at the Sam spot in our base personnel. He's going to be a great guy for us. And, of course, setting the edge, getting around the, um, getting around the edge on pass rush. And even in, as a run defender, I feel like he's a great addition. I'm glad he's in the room. I'm glad to get to work with him. Aside from Gaynor, who among the newcomers on defense has kind of stood out like maybe a ahead of the curve right now? Um, right now, man, it's just really up for grabs right now. So right now it's like, um, um, sadly with Malachi, he was the next guy up, but with him having his um, ACL situation, you know, got to have next guy up, he's always next guy up. So um, right now it's between Gabe Stevens, Tyler Thompson, and um, Jay Brown, um, Harvey. So it's really up for grabs with any of those guys. Um, Tyler and um, Gabe got a fair amount of reps today, so we're just going to have to evaluate film and see where they land up. But it's going to be one of those guys we're going to need to call in just in case we need a third man in. What's it like seeing Tamari out there finally getting reps and, and that he's preparing to actually play in a season? I mean, you can't miss him. The joke is the pads look like it hurts when you put them on. So, I mean, you can't miss the man. But um, I'm glad to have him out there. You know, I'm just glad he's um, get his season back. You know, he's been itching to have this moment. Um, and so just having him out there, man, bringing that pass rush intensity, his energy is like – is, uh, is like you, you nobody can match it. So it's just like one of those things where like having him out there, he he brings that edge, he brings the physicality, he brings the tenacious ability that we need in the front, in the front D line. So just having him back there is a blessing, man. I'm glad he's back out there. That's my brother. So I'm glad to have him out. Okay, I mean, when when I'm sure you guys talked about like 
making the move full time to, to Jack? Like, how did those conversations go when they approached you with it? And like, I mean, were you a little hesitant? I mean, you, I'm sure you always felt thought of yourself as a defensive end. You know, like, how did this the whole getting ready to make the change uh, but, uh, go about? Transition wasn't hard. I mean, I already made the transition um, late in the season right. last year, so the transition wasn't hard at all. And it wasn't really like a, hey, we're going to put you in jack. It was kind of already expected, you know. We're losing uh, Noah Taylor. We lost Chris Collins. We got some guys that's a little short in the room. And with me transitioning into that, pray, um, playing outside linebacker previously under a different formation of defense, yeah. it was just like, we're going to need you to play some jack. So I was like, all right, bet. But, I mean, like, it was never a um, hesitation. I was, I was down for it from the jump. Um, I told, I remember telling y'all this last season, it was like, wherever y'all need me, I'll be. And so that's what they said they needed me, and here I am. Yeah, I didn't know if there was like a, a sit down, like before winter or spring, and like, all right, look, you know, yeah. no more defensive end, you're uh, Jack. It was just like I said, it was just like, it was an expectation. Um, they kind of knew that this is where they wanted me to be. It was like, you know, they had like, like talking to my ear a little bit, just like chirping my ear, saying it was just like, you know, just be ready to play some Jack and things of that nature. And so um, after a while, once we got um, established, like in the off season, like what we wanted to do for the spring and things of that nature, it was like, all right, we're going to be playing full time Jack now. So I was like, all right, say that. Kaylee, what was the low point for you last year, and how much has that been a motivating factor for the offseason and going into next year? Um, a low point for me, honestly, I would say just like with me, I would resonate off of the entirety of the defense as a whole. I would say it's just like us not being able to finish towards the end of the game, and I feel like that's a low point, especially during um, the Holiday Bowl against Oregon. That, that hit me in the heart a lot because it felt like it was just like after time after time again, it was times where like we would be in the game, but we just couldn't finish as a defense. And so um, I feel like right now, man, that just gives me a lot more motivation as a player and just being amongst the leader of the defense is just like, we got to learn how to finish, man. We got to learn how to um, attack the balls when they're in the air. We got to learn how to pass rush better. We got to learn how to stop the run, not just in first, um, not on first down, but second and third down and fourth down if they get there and things of that nature. So it was just like one of those things where like that's just constant motivation where like I have to hold myself accountable. I have to hold hell um, hold everybody else accountable. And like I just I don't want to get that um to that point again. So that's kinda like my motivating, especially going through spring right now. Sid told us the other day that effort and physicality are written on the board every time you guys go into a meeting. Um, like is that just you know, is is that getting beaten into your to your head so to speak from, from Coach Chiz? No, nah, because it's an expectation. That's the standard, and we don't go anything less than the standard. So if effort and physicality is the standard, we're going to reach that, if not above. And so I feel like, you know, if, like with our defense, man, we're bringing a lot of pressures. We're bringing a lot of phys um, physical guys on different scenarios. So it's just like effort and physicality. If you can't reach these standards, man, then you're going to be there. And so it's just one of those things where, like, we, um, we're trying to just not really, like, kind of like just constantly beating, but it was just like, you know, we got to, you gotta understand, this is our standard, and if you can't reach it, we can't expect you to make plays and be out there. So, um, with that having on board, man, I feel like everybody knows it, especially for the front, um, front 11 guys, with um, the starting 11 guys and the um, white guys. You know, it's just like, this what is, that's the standard, so we gotta stay to it. And to go along with that, Mac has talked about wanting to be more aggressive on defense from the front seven to the to the guys like maybe playing more press coverage that type of thing like it does that do those words sort of go along with sort of what mac has told us about needing to be more aggressive on defense needing to kind of crank it up a little bit more yes sir it's like you know if we can bring more guys then let's bring them in five man pressure six man pressure and no matter how many men you bring if we can bring as many guys as we can to Cause um, cause havoc to wreak havoc on the defensive side. Let's do it. I'm all in for it. So um, if Coach Brown's touched up on, then obviously it's been said in the coaching in the coach staff meeting room. So that's what we finna do. All right. Thanks, Kevin.